That's what's holding us back. Anand Gerdadas explores this in his new book, India Calling, an intimate portrait of our nation's remaking. And uh, Anand was born in the U.S., I think in Shaker Heights outside Cleveland, but went back to India after school to write. It's great to talk to you. I saw you with uh, John Stewart the other night and wanted to meet you sort of in person because you were raising a lot of points about what it's like to have been raised here as an American and feeling that foreignness, which we all reject as kids. We all want to be belong. And then realizing that the real innovation is, in fact, in the country of your ancestral roots. In a way, uh, what I've lived in just by, by the fact of, of when I grew up in, in the early 80s and uh, 1990s, I've kind of lived the transition that you've been talking about uh, this hour. I, I grew up in America in a time when it was still kind of unquestionable, in which uh, Tuesday night speech wouldn't have been necessary to remind us uh, that this is the most innovative country in the world, the most dynamic country, the country where reinvention is most possible. Uh, but over the course of my life, time, uh, the country that my parents left in the 1970s, India, uh, emerged from a long period of dormancy to become, in many ways, a capital of reinvention and, and of hope in the world. And America, in that same time period, uh, as the president reminded us painfully on Tuesday night, uh, seems to be becoming something else. And that is the great drama of our time in many ways. You have a column where you write about this. Uh, I think the column is going to be posted tomorrow. What is much more threatening to the American future, you write, is the American idea itself, now lived by people half a world away, even as it withers at home. America has inspired with its can-do frontier culture of self-help and self-making millions of people in India and China and elsewhere to believe in the creed of reinvention. It has taught the ordinary to dream and dare in far corners of the world where dreaming and daring are still almost criminal. And we see it now actually playing out in India, in China, and other places. And it's kind of shriveled here at home. It's amazing to me. You know, when I was a child and I would go to India on these visits every two years or so, uh, India always seemed a place where people had so much potential within them and then that potential had nowhere to go. It had no headroom. And my parents came to America because uh, that potential had ample headroom here and, and anything was possible. And now when you, when you go to India, I spent six years there and came back a year and a half ago to this country. When you, when you travel in India, small town India, even the villages of India, you meet people with almost nothing uh, who somehow have gotten the idea that great things are possible for them, that destiny can be changed, uh, that no one can come in their way. And it's very striking in this country, if you think about our political discourse, just to take one example, uh, we are all behaving, the way we talk to each other, the way we argue on television, uh, as though we're fighting over the last scraps of greatness. And I think we really need to think about not just economic competitiveness, which the president focused on on Tuesday, uh, but also cultural competitiveness. If we are fighting uh, and tearing each other down, we are not doing what India and China are doing, which is creating a culture of hope uh, and of creation. I think you said that your sister worked at Google, and at one point you and your sister had both gone back to India, and your parents are here in Shaker Heights saying, you know, what have we done wrong? Uh, they were, she was thinking remarkable. about going there, and, and, and my, mother, my mother wondered uh, what happens if, 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 if we left in the 70s and now both of my kids end up back in India. But you're back here, and we're glad to see you up there at Cambridge at Harvard. Thank you very much. Uh, the book is India Calling, and here. we all look forward to reaching, reading it. And thanks for joining us today.